In this VFX breakdown of the Adam project, we're going to take a look at some digital sets that were rendered in real time, the CG Magsil and other Saurian tech, the necessity for CG trees and foliage, and for some reason, a CG leg. D Neg was tasked with creating the Saurian jet and the time jet. The brief for the Saurian jet was that it had to be like a big, dark and sinister tank that was capable of flying very fast. And the brief for the time jet was that it had to be a streamlined military vehicle that was quick and nimble. Although the briefs for the two vehicles were different, both had to look like futuristic technology without looking too sci-fi or otherworldly, or too similar to craft from other movies. The Saurian jet was almost entirely CG. In fact, the only physical set built for it was this blue screen doorway from which the Time Soldier surface emerged. And the only physical set that was built for the Time Jet was this partial cockpit, which was attached to a gimbal to allow the filmmakers to pitch and tilt it, depending on the needs of the shot. Even though the cockpit was a practical set piece, CGI was still used to add details to its interior, the background to the windows, and to remove the wires they used to make young Adam appear weightless in this scene. And because the wires still weren't quite enough to sell the look that little Adam was really floating around, they also added this CG leg. The safe house and its backyard were actually a practical set built in a hockey stadium. The forest in the background was extended digitally, and because the practical set had artificial grass that didn't really look grassy enough, it also had to be CGI. As were these trees in this car chase scene, because the forest wasn't foresty enough. And all the foliage beneath and around the car here, because it wasn't foliagey enough. And these time soldier surfers here were also CG as was this car door. In fact, the car the actors were filmed in was never even driven in the forest at all. It was actually all filmed on a set with the car on a rig and in front of blue screens. Scanline, amongst other things, was responsible for the magsil as well as the Time Soldier weapon effects. For the magsil, there were a variety of concepts done by the production team and these formed part of the final digital design. In addition to the actual digital asset, they had to develop the MagSil's various electromagnetic discharges and how the MagSil could pulse energy into an environment. Stop bullets via an electromagnetic shield or help Adam jump into the air. The final result for all of these effects ended up being a blend of multiple Houdini renders and compositing passes that brought the MagSil to life in the film. For the particle accelerator scene, the platforms, stairs and a partial section of the particle accelerator were all a practical set, but almost everything else in the scene was CGI. Due to the complexity of the scene, a lot of interaction was required to happen between the actors and the set itself. This is a tricky thing to do, especially when your set is mainly CGI. To overcome this problem, Scanline built a low-res version of the digital set before principal photography started. Then, with the help of some cutting-edge software and an iPad, they were able to point the iPad toward the part they wished to see and view that area of the digital set in real time. This allowed the director to explore the set and design shots from angles and elevations that previously would have been missed or wouldn't have been possible. And it also meant that the director could see both the physical and the digital set at the same time, and actually know, in that very moment, that he had achieved a thoroughly convincing effect, without having to take a leap of faith. <laughs>